Wanda. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got a, I'm going to sing a song today for you. I've got a track. Praise God. This is a song that I wrote back in 2009. And uh, it's, a, it's about a lady who's in trouble. And she's lonely. And she some, tried some things that didn't work. Now she's trying to figure out what next. And somehow God shows up. Isn't that wonderful to know he'll do that? Uh, now, if I brought the track, it's got steel guitar and bass and drums and all that stuff but it's just me this morning so she was looking sound and feeling blue there was no doubt what she was up to she was trying to drink her tears away Hoping she'd wake up to a better day But when she woke up Just another hangover With no better luck No four-leaf clover No man of a dream Standing next to her Just the same empty house And the same old hurt Yeah And that's when she I'm moving on, I will be strong and sing my new song. I'm getting up and walking away. I'll find a new city, I'll start a new day. The world's gonna see, there'll be a new me. I'm moving on. Driving, riding into town Set to discover She was looking around Found a mom and pop diner And a corner booth Some eggs and hash browns Time to think it through Somebody dropped some change In an old jukebox Her coffee steamed While she dreamed And then she thought that song trying to say about God's love and grace. What a strange inspiration in this simple place. And that's when she said, I'm moving on. I will be strong and sing my new song. I'm turning around and walking God's way. I really believe in second chances today The Lord's gonna see With Him helping me I'm moving on It's funny what you'll do When you get tired of the old Don't want to keep living there You'll lay it down when you get to know You don't need to keep losing and walking alone God's love will pick you up And start heading home And that's when you'll say I'm moving on I will be strong and sing my new song I'm turning around, that's you I'm walking God's way I'm ready to take my second chance today The Lord's gonna see With God helping me I'm moving on And you're gonna see With God helping me I'm moving on. God can give you a fresh start. Hallelujah. 
Sometimes it's time to just pick up and move forward, isn't it? Right? And I, that was songs about a young lady that she was just, she was tired of trying to drink her troubles away and she was still lonely and just woke up with another hangover. I know you heard the song, but then she said, I'm going to get out of this town. I'm going to find a new city. I'm going to find a new day. I'm going to get out of here, leave my past behind. She was driving into the next town and didn't know anything about it. She found a little mom and pop diner. She says, Maybe I'll stop in there for a little breakfast and have some time to think about things. So she's eggs and hash browns and her and, and, and uh, so she can think about it. And and she says, Dive, I'm driving, riding into town, set to discover. She was looking around. She found a mama pop diner in the corner booth, some eggs and hash browns, time to think it through. Somebody, while she was sitting there, went over to the old jukebox. And somehow Amazing Grace was on that jukebox. And somebody played that. And she heard that. And the grace of God started talking to her. She wasn't looking for God, but God came looking for her. And somebody played that song. And she says, uh, uh, somebody, says somebody dropped some change in an old jukebox. There's coffee steamed while she dreamed. And then she thought, what, what, what's that song trying to say about God's love and grace? What a strange inspiration in this simple place. And that's when she said, I'm going to take hold of that. God's work, speaking to me, and I'm going to take hold of what God's trying to do in my life. She said, I'm going to move on. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to sing a new song. I'm going to turn around and walk God's way. I really believe now in second chances today. The Lord's going to see with him helping me. I'm moving on. And then the bridge says, it's funny what you'll do when you get tired of the old. You'll lay it down when you get to know that you don't have to keep losing and walking alone. God's love will pick you up and start heading you home. And that's when you'll say, I want the world out there to hear this and say, I'm moving on. I'll be strong. I'll sing a new song. I'm turn, I'll turn around. I'm turning around and I'm walking God's way. I'm ready to take my second chance today. Here I come, Jesus. Here I come, Jesus. We had somebody raise their hand a couple of weeks ago. We've got to get them back in here. But for Jesus, amen. He said, that, that's when you'll see, the, the God, with God helping me, I'm moving on. And, and so it's time, friends. Sometimes, isn't it? Time to say, I'm done with yesterday, isn't it? Time to say, I'm moving forward in Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you today about foundations and first things and all that. And praise God. I have been, uh, I'm going to get into that in just a minute. You know, I was going through some old things in a notebook. I mean, uh, and some piles of books and such. And this is something I found as a notebook where... In the in here, I was pastoring Worthing in Worthington, Indiana, about forty years ago. Whenever that was, was that about forty something like that? Anyway, something like that. And yeah, we were there from eighty-one to eighty-four. And in the May of eighty-four, I must have preached this message. I'm not preaching it today. I'll probably preach it soon. But it talked about in His name. But I found some sermon notes of something that I preached. 40 years ago next month. And it's still speaking to me, so you're going to probably hear it soon. Wow. It's good to take notes and to keep things and to have some people say, why don't you throw that old stuff away? Because it'll come in handy someday. That's why. Right? Sometimes old things still speak to you today, right? Foundational things, beginning things. I was 30, I was 40 years younger. And... Uh, it was our first actual full-time pastor pastorate, and uh, and uh, while we were there, we actually got went and got fully ordained. Hallelujah! 
Praise God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think I think that looks like no, that's not empty. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hello, everybody on camera. <laughs> Hi, Facebook friends. I hope you enjoyed that song. You know, I was thinking about that, and then I then while I was there, it's that pile of paperwork I found. Some other things that were when we were pastoring in New Whiteland. Uh, when uh, we were going through some training and teaching and some notes, I took on some things then. And that was uh, about 10 years after that. I, 89 to 95, we pastored in New Whiteland, where Wayne Murray is right now, running way more than we ever did when we were there. He runs about 2,500 on a Sunday. And uh, it's, it was, uh, I knew there was a touch of God on that property. And... Uh, and I knew eventually, whether while we were there or somebody else, that God was going to really do something great. Well, Wayne Murray is a great leader. He's a good. He's a man of God. And my son and my son or son Stephen, our second child, he was when he was uh, fifteen and sixteen. He was preaching to our youth group at that location, New Whiteland. I think annexed by Greenwood since then. So. So we, he was about 17 when we left that church. And, um, but he was, he and his family now are going to that church. And he's got children and grandchildren. What? What's going on? He's got children and grandchildren. Uh, my, his children and a couple of grandchildren. I got a grandchildren and a couple, a couple of great grandsons that are going to that church. So, you know, we have some history there. We took six years of, the, of our lives and put it into that place. You know, the, the seed that you sow is not wasted, friends. You need to say that uh, I may just be a building block in a larger thing, but that's all right. It's okay. Amen. Isn't it all right? Someday this is going to be full, full, full soon, believe. And thank God for there's a few more of you, and we appreciate all of you very much. But I know this, that uh, there's uh, uh, your time here is not wasted. You hear me? Your time here is not nothing in the middle of the country. God's doing some things important here. He's in, in this church, and uh, we're going to reach a larger number in this town. God's doing great things here. But he's also going to add more. But anyhow, he's also doing something important in you. You are being blessed to be here and be part of this. And five years from now, ten years from now, you're going to look back if the Lord tarries and say, "Boy, the time we worked with Pastor Winters there, Church on the Hill, it was it was it was, it was an important time for us, for the town, for the church, for our for our family. It was an important time for us. And we're thankful that it was a time that God did great things. That church in in uh, Worthington, where I've got that no sermon knows from uh, they're doing pretty good right now after we left they built a new building <laughs> funny after we leave they build new buildings <laughs> but and uh it's uh really something but you know the three years that we spent there the six years we spent in worthington uh, at uh, new whiteland and uh, which is now greenwood that church and the years we spent in other churches and also some associate roles and some music minister roles and sometimes te leading up the Sunday school department, all the different things God had us to do with wonderful uh, different various men of God working under their leadership and all that. It was, it's not a waste of time. We learn things and our kids, this is what my kids got to see. Mom and dad really are committed. Whether it's this or that. Or the dad's the pastor, or he's helping somebody, or whatever else. And now for a while, we had a musical group that went traveling around in different various places and did a lot of my songs and stuff like that. So just you just need to have a lifelong testimony that once you come to Jesus, I'm going to serve him for the rest of my days. Amen? Whether it's here or there, big, little, small, hidden away, visible, known by many, known by few that I'm doing a job to serve God and be faithful to him. Amen? All righty. So, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Just felt like I needed to say that because you are all important. I love you all. You're very important. You matter to me. You matter to God. You matter to each other. Amen? 
All righty. So let's get into the word that I have for you for today, that God's got for you for today. Let's look at that, if you put that on, brother, just for a moment. Foundations and first things. You can see on the left there, it looks like a foundation of a house. I can't tell if that's block or poured. I can't tell for sure. It might be block. It looks like, uh, on the end of it, it looks like block. So, but that looks like a, a cross space type of foundation. You know, and guess what? If that's where you stopped, you wouldn't really want to live there. But if you skip that and just put a bunch of nice stuff from the ground up, you wouldn't want to live there either. Because it wouldn't last. Eventually a storm would come along and that would be a pile of rubble. You got to have a strong foundation. Friends, as a believer, you not get, you got to, the ABCs, Jesus loves me, this I know. And the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. And all the simple childlike type things that we, you hear around here sometimes when the kids are around. Those are good fundamental foundational things that you need in your life to hold on to. Amen? So anyhow, let, Brother Hoy, you still got there just for another second. Hebrews chapter 6 started in verse 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance for dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do, if God permits. Let's pray. Father, bless your word to our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Right, brother, you can get back to me. So... Once a good foundation is in place, you can go on. It says, it says, leaving the discussion of the elementary, the beginning principles. I'm going to talk to you about some things today that if you're just a beginner Christian, you should know these things. And so that's why we got to know those things so we can build upon them and go forward. Amen? You know, if you see a great work of God where maybe we visited Tommy Barnett's church three years ago in Phoenix, Arizona, and he had 200 ministries going on in his church at that time. You know, he's in his 80s now, but at that time he was about 58, 59. And, uh, and his son now has kind of taken over. But they even had a guy ride a, drive a motorcycle right up onto the platform, right up onto the platform as one of their outreaches that they had. You know, and they just gave up one, I think it was Tuesday night, they gave you a parade of and they just, everybody would take just a few, half a minute, and you move on to the next one, move on to the next one, and all the things they did. And what he said was, the reason we've got all these ministries here is I said, God, I'm not big enough to do all this on my own. You've got to lead people to come here that got a gift and a vision, and they can see some things that maybe I can't see because they got a different background and a different history, different giftings. We lead them here, God. And if you'll show me that they're credible people that I can trust, I'll put them to work here and we'll see how. And so that led from zero ministries to 200 ministries. And that was an amazing thing. They've opened the Dream Center in California. Uh, the one in Phoenix, they now call it, I think, Dream Center or something like that. But uh, uh, they, they're reaching a lot of people. But it talks about the elementary things here. We can go on to perfection once we put uh, down a foundation. Brother Joe's a home builder, <laughs> built a lot of houses. He knows you didn't just lay the lumber out. You had to put a foundation first. And it says, we'll go on to perfection or completion. We want to complete this thing. Friends, if you're a brand new Christian or if you're a Christian that's been at it for years, decades, I want you to know that these are good times. These are important times in your life. These are times for you to say, I'm going to do my best to be my best. I'm going to learn. I'm going to get grounded. I'm going to mature. I'm going to grow in God. Because I don't know if I really give my whole heart to him, how, what big things he may have in store for me in my life. Amen? This church isn't always going to be. This church is going to be full up. Amen. I thank God for all of you that are here. You matter to us a lot. But I'm not giving up on my faith and vision for that. Right? Amen. Amen. We've been here in November. It'll be 11 years. And, you know, a lot of ups and downs. Church went up. 
and went back down a little bit, went up, down, and part of it was people died. <laughs> part of it was people moved to another town where they found a better job. <laughs> and, you know, things like that happen, other things. And so, but God's doing a great work here. Believe me, he's doing a great work. If God wasn't doing such a great work, I wouldn't be facing some, some of the battles I face. God's doing a great work here, and he's doing a work in you and in this church and in this town because if he wasn't, I wouldn't find so much opposition, and you wouldn't either. So we're going to win. We're winning in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Foundations are boring. Isn't that boring? That ain't so pretty. Just a bunch of white block. Man, that's just boring. When we were, when we, when we were in Worthington, we, were put, we put up a, a 30 by 50 new building just to have some fellowship hall while we were there. And because, you know, you have, we wanted to do things as we had the money, <laughs> we poured the foundation. Then it was a few months before we did anything else. <laughs> I went down to the local IGA, and the guy who owned the house right next to the church property said to me one time, and when I was going shopping in the IGA, he said, well, Pastor Warner, that's a real nice foundation you have down there. He was kind of making fun of it a little bit. Guess what? It went beyond that. It's full. It's been used for years now, and they built a new church right next to it. Because when we were there, we were meeting in a house. And a, and a house we got to run in about 120, 100, 125 or something like that in a house. You know, God, God can do amazing things in places that don't look like God could do anything there. So don't you walk in here or drive up on this property and say anything negative in your mind. You say, wow, isn't this a great place God's given us? This would be a great, you know, <laughs> we had a storefront church for a while in the south side of Indianapolis near the University of Indianapolis, you know, and, and that was about three or four years, something like that, that we did that. And, uh, uh, and so you could say, man, this is a great place to start a church. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for people that say, oh, what about those people that are running thousands? What's they got all that stuff going for? Well, they didn't start there, for one thing. Nobody did. And besides that, it, this would be a great place to start a church. <laughs> it's been started a long, it started in 1933, was it, Brother Joe? About 33 when they really, so right around there. This has been, church has been going a long time, and it's been times when the balcony used to be open, and they'd fill up the sanctuary full of people and run chairs up and down the aisles. That's what I heard. It was before I ever got here, but that's what I heard. And then, uh, and there were times they ran quite a bit. So, you know, people, uh, uh, situations go through cycles of things, but we're cycling up. Anybody, anybody ready to cycle back up? Uh, that the former days would be greater than, than the, the, the latter days would be greater than the former days. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that in Jesus' name. Praise God. I guess I'll get my little buddy out here and move, move on into this. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was sure, wasn't sure just exactly, but that foundation isn't so, such a big deal. It's got some rebar sticking out of it. But guess what? If you didn't have that foundation, you don't have a house. If you don't get your foundations in God established, be a Bible reader, be a person of prayer, be faithful to church. If you don't get those foundations established, you're not going to really go anywhere with God. You've got to get that going. Amen. And I know I'm not as young as I used to be, and I've seen a lot of things and people come and go. Yeah, I've, been, I've been around long enough to see that. <laughs> And I know this, that those who put their mind to it and say, God, I'm not quitting no matter what. You're decades later, they're still in, in, in the work of God and moving forward with God. Amen. Amen. Unless the, lo the Lord builds the, the, the house, the Bible says in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless God is at the core of what we do at this church, we're doing it all for nothing. Unless God is in you building up a family with children and home and career and the things that you want to build up in your life. Unless God is in the middle of that or at the foundation of it, you're laboring in vain. In other words, you might get something accomplished. I'm not saying that everybody out there with big houses and lots of money is only because they're serving God because some of them are not. <laughs> 
In other words, you can't achieve certain things in life with, without a direct partnership with God, but it's all will eventually come to an end. And none of it will be as fulfilling as it could be if you had God in the middle of it. Amen? Amen. 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 So Matthew 7 talks about two foundations. You know about that. Uh, one built their, a wise builder built his found, life, his, uh, his home on the rock, and the storms came. We sing that song here sometimes. <laughs> storms came down and floods came up. And the house on the sound went bush crash. <laughs> But the wise builder built his house on a rock. He dug past the sand. He said, I know there's some rock down there. Nowadays, of course, they pour concrete. And they pour footers and things like that. And then lay the block on the footers or build, you know, pour a, a, a slab wall on it if you're doing a basement, things like that. And so uh, you got to build it on something solid. And you also got to make sure that where the lot that you build on is not, then used to be a landfill and it's going to move six feet the minute you get your house in place. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I feel the earth shaking under my feet. Oh, what's going on? Is, is it God? No, we just <laughs> built our house on the wrong place. I guess I don't know what it was. Um, but there's a wise master builder spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, according to the grace of God which was given to me, all talking to that, and any of us could say it's about us. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. So you've got to lay the foundation if you're wise. And another builds on it. You know, whatever you're doing, building in your life, whatever house you're living in, somebody else will probably live in it someday. Maybe. Lord Terry's. And whoever used to be the pa pastor at, in this pulpit, he's not here anymore. And I am. And if the Lord Terry's... There'll be a day when it'll be somebody beside me. So, in the, men, in the meantime, what you got to do say is, I'm going to be wise how I build upon the foundation that others have laid. Amen. It says, as a wise master builder, I've laid a foundation and other builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. You know, there's, when people go to work for a company, and the first thing they do is start griping about how they're doing everything, why do you do it like this? Why do you do it like this? And then that person that's doing all that griping doesn't have any real experience or maturity or any real perspective to be able to do any, you know, credible critique. They just are critical people, you know. And like, God, why are you running the world like this? You know, God says, go invent your own world, and then we'll see where, how your, your world comes out, right? And so, you know, you work for a company, and the boss says, you know, you're kind of a grippy person, aren't you? Why don't you start your own company and see how well you can do on your own? Start your own church and see how well you do on your own. Stuff like that. So in other words, we love each other. We compliment each other. We help each other. We, we look for the best in each other. And we want to help each other excel. And we're for each other. Amen? And if you, I want to see that you're doing something good and making a worthwhile effort and say, go, go, go for it, go for it, go for it. And if I might look at a younger person in the church and say, well, I'm not sure I would do it exactly that way, I might also say, unless I want to have to do everything, I'm glad they're doing it. <laughs> right? You got my point? So I'm glad for every one of you that steps up and does something in this church. And if I would say, you know, like when you're teaching your kids to do work around the house or taking a kid out on the job and teaching them how to saw a board or whatever, you know, you could say, man, you could say, get out of the way. I can do it faster. That's a dumb thing to do unless you want to be a one-man show the rest of your life. You can't be that way. You got to. You got to be patient and willing to mentor and teach and give patience and time to other people to build them into the team, right? Into the team. Into the team. It says, take heed how you build on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay than the one that's really the important foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, Wood, hay, and straw, and I know there's more verses in that context, but I just stopped right there. But Some people are building their lives with gold and silver and precious stones, things that matter, love. And, and, and Everybody still with me? Don't I need to turn that on? Everybody. <laughs> Some people build with gold silver and precious stones 
Other people just say, oh, I'll just throw anything on there, it'll be okay. Well, yeah, if you just throw anything on there, you're going to get just any old thing. <laughs> but if you use excellence, you know, one thing I know about Brother Joe is I appreciate his work that he does around here, Brother Joe Guinari, everything that he's done, you know, over the years. Because believe me, if you sat at a board meeting, you'd find out Joe wants to do things the right way. <laughs> and how many of you are glad for that? Amen. And he, and uh, yeah, amen. <laughs> and not only that, he knows the right way. <laughs> yeah, I, he's got to figure it out. You know, I know we, we put our heads together and think of through and pray through a lot of things, though, of course. Hallelujah. Back to the basics. Why? The basics are the foundational things, which must be in place as a beginning point before any great project can successfully be attempted. If you don't put the foundation work down, don't worry about building your half million dollar mansion on top of nothing. I got the finest ideas for the for the drapes and the furnishings and the windows and the doors and the and, and, the, and the flooring and all that stuff. Uh, but foundation, who cares about that? Wait a minute, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to waste all that money. Oh, back to the basics. Vince Lombardi was a anybody ever heard that name? Some of you have, some of you have not. Vince Lombardi, ever heard that name? Back in the late 60s, the early 60s, till about 70 or 71, he, was, he died in a plane crash, I think. But he was a uh, coach for the Green Bay Packers. That was back when they were the team, America's team. They were winning championships. They won a bunch of them. And so here's what he told the guys one time. He said they, he said they were messing up. They were making mistakes. They weren't achieving the excellence that he knew they were capable of. They kept making, slipping up and making mental mistakes and doing things that he knew that they knew better. Sometimes we mess up in ways that we knew better than to do it that way, right? We got in a hurry or got distracted or whatever or felt like we needed a shortcut. And that doesn't always work out too well. But Vince Larbardi came up to his guy's famous scene in the locker room. And he says, we're going, gentlemen, we're going back to the basics. The first thing he did was hold up a, a ball and he says, this is a football. You're kind of going way back to the beginning, aren't you, boss? <laughs> You're kind of getting real in elementary. He probably thought, well, that's where your thinking is right now. You need to get reestablished in what the basic things are. Friends, the foundational things for a Christian is read your Bible, talk to God every day, and go to church, and go to work for God in the local church, and be a witness wherever you go. That's the basic stuff, amen? And you need to study and know the doctrines. The Assemblies of God has got a great thing, I think. It's called 16 Fundamental Truths. And we're talking about six things today if we get to it. Uh, 16 fundamental truths, and I think they're a great study. And I, I did, for a few years ago, I did that on Wednesday nights. And uh, I've got the notebook still, so I think I'm going to have some time when we're going to get to it. And it's just really good, solid, solid Bible stuff, you know. And if you know that stuff, you're pretty solid. You know, if you know it and believe it, you've got to believe it and act on it. Gentlemen, this is a Bible. So, so back to the first things, Amen. This is a football, he said. <laughs> Not a Bible. It's football. Okay. Potential disaster of broken foundations. To look at this, it says, For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened. Now I'm going to show you some steps here. He says, It's impossible if you've done this and this and this and this and this and this and this. You've experienced these different things. You've gone to the depth of this kind of experience with God. To, if you just throw that all away, it's going to be hard for you to come back. And it says here, uh, it's impossible for those who once enlightened, that means you received revelation of Christ and who he was, have tasted of the heavenly gift, that's Jesus. I think that means they were born again. People, Some people say, no, that, that can't be, but it's, that's how I see it. And partakers of the Holy Spirit became temples of the Holy Spirit, had an interaction in the, with the Holy Spirit, read the Bible and, and, and moved with the Holy Spirit in their lives and got revelation from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and have tasted of the good Word of God. Those have really been exposed to deeper revelation, Bible truths, you know, foundational, big, strong, meaty Word of God type messages. You've been exposed to all of that. And it says, and of the powers of the age to come, of the fact that, you know, 
He's going to establish an eternal kingdom, and he's setting up his kingdom in your heart right now. One of these days, and you're getting a revelation of the fact that one of these days, God's going to judge this world and set up his kingdom on this earth. Jerusalem's coming down from the sky, going to sit on earthly Jerusalem. There's going to be a, a city of God that's a thousand, thousand mile, 1,500 mile cube. How could that happen? I don't know. <laughs> Just read the Bible. That's what it says in the book of Revelation. Uh, it says, it's impossible for those who are enlightened, taste the hill of them, all these things, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. So this is what I'm trying to say to you in this. I'm not trying to say once saved, always saved, or the opposite, which is you could lose your salvation at the drop of a hat. All you got to do is sneeze and you're not saved anymore. I don't want people to think that, okay? That's not where we're going with any of this thing. But what it just means is that the more you hear from God, the more you've learned, the more you've experienced, the more you're really responsible to hold on to what God's shown you and taught you and say, I'm, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Remember Lot's wife? Remember her? They had finally escaped the corruption of Sodom, and they were leaving that area, and God told them all, don't look back. Well, guess what? The only way you'd look back is if your heart was still back there. And, then, and a Lot kept moving forward. His kids kept moving forward. But Lot's wife said, I kind of miss the place. <laughs> Look back. <laughs> you know, and then she turned into a pillar of salt, you know. And so I said, I even put that in one of my songs. We don't need any pillars of salt. salt. Remember Lot's wife? It's talking about good yesterdays, bad yesterdays, leaving both behind, that kind of a thing. But anyway... But it says here, potential disaster, that, okay. Beginning, uh, being fruitful for, for God. Okay, oh, I got, got ahead of myself. Let's move back. Not where I meant to go. Okay, back to the basics. All right, I'm back there. All right. Down there, didn't I? <laughs> Potential disaster, okay, I'm going to do that. God? Okay, well, being fruitful for God. Did I get my papers out of order? Yes, I did. That's my fault. Anyway, being fruitful for God. He talks about the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it, bears herbs, uh, useful for those that come to cult, cultivate and receiving blessing from God. In other words, if you take all the stuff God's put in your life and don't give him anything back, you know, that's not a good life. That's not a good testimony. I want to take all of the good stuff God's put in my heart and life and give me revelations, help me to see things, experience things, know people, see things, you know, learn things from him. I want to put that all to work and to make me all that I can be for his glory. Amen? And so anyway, praise the Lord. That's what that's about. Leaving, advancing uh, behind, leaving, advancing beyond Elementary principles of the doctrines. Truth that beginners should know. Kindergartners ought to know. Christian kindergartners ought to know this thing. Number one, repentance from dead works. So I want to tell you about these six things real quickly. Repentance from dead works. What's that talking about? Repent means to say, I'm turning away from it. I'm changing direction. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm changing my thinking. I'm going to stop thinking that way, living that way, doing that stuff. Okay? So what are we talking about? Ungodly sinful works. You know, all that setting you used to do and liked it for a while till you found out it wasn't it was gonna cost you too much and you wanted to quit it, right? Amen. And so repentance, I'm turning from that. Said I used to people used to, I don't snort or smoke snort or chew or hang with those that do, but you know, I used to I used to smoke and I smoked more than just cigarettes, you know, and and uh, I snorted a little bit of uh, I never did cocaine but I did some hash and some Joe and stuff like that and didn't enough drinking, and that was, I did all my drinking. I did all that stuff by the time I was 23 years, years old. For, uh, first time I ever drove home drunk from a bar, I was playing in a country and western band. I was 17 years old and drove home drunk, and I thought, well, thank God I didn't get caught with that because I could have messed up the rest of my life. You know, thank God for that. My mama was praying for me. So here's a new start, change, a new start. So I, th I, thought, I thought it would be good to kind of leave that stuff behind. Amen? Anybody? Right? Uh, or dead religion. 
without God as its source or sustainer or object. I don't want to come together and just have some dead religion that's more like an Elks Club or a Moose Club than it is talking about Jesus, amen? I mean, if you belong to one of those things, okay. But I'm going to tell you what, this ain't one of those. <laughs> We're all about Jesus here, amen? Amen. And so we got to know that. Uh, our man-centered religion, you know, here I am. The great personality and come by the thousands to see the great whoever this guy is in the pulpit because he's got such a gift. He speaks with such charming words and he's got such a great personality, big smile. He even sings better than I do. He's just uh, all this, you know, all, you know, any of that, that's just dead work. So you got to repent from that. You got to leave that stuff behind and not do that anymore. Amen. Okay. The next thing I want to talk to you about here is uh, next foundational things is faith toward God. So, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, amen. Uh, believing in the completed work of Jesus on the cross. When Jesus hung his head and said it is finished, he meant, I, I got the job done, Daddy. I got the job done, Father. Now you can let me leave this body for a while until I come and pick it up in a few days. And let me have my reward. My suffering is over. The payment's been made in full. Jesus said, he said, it's finished. But so believing in the completed work of Jesus on the cross, ensured by his resurrection. When he died on the cross, that paid for it. When he came back from the dead, that ensured that he was going to be here to enforce his will. Jesus not only made you promises and went to a cross, he's alive right now so he can come to you. In your life and say, I'm here to help you get it done. To help you get it done. That's Jesus. He's here. He's in this room right now. Do you know that? And it's not just me up here talking. Well, this is me, but <laughs> I'm not trying to say I'm him, but I'm saying he's in this room. He's here now. And angels, did you know the holy angels are here? And there might have been a demon that tried to sneak in too, but we rebuke him in Jesus' name. But the holy angels and the, and the Holy Ghost and Jesus, he's there in this room right now, right, right now with us. So take all that. Amen. And so Ephesians chapter 2 says that we're saved by grace through faith. The grace saves us, but we, but we have to get, grab a hold of that grace by faith. And he says, that is not of yourself. That's the gift of God too. I wouldn't even have faith. As, I wouldn't have a heart that wanted God if he didn't help me to want him. I wouldn't have a, a, a heart and faith that would let me take hold of the promise of God if he didn't give me that faith. Amen. I can't do any of this stuff. Not a lick of my salvation came from anything I did. Now I have to respond to it and submit to it and say, yes, I want it. You know, and I submit to your lordship, Jesus. But I'm not, I can't save myself. And you can't save yourself either. Amen? Right? Okay. So sustained, so we get sustained and supplied and protected. And we get a victorious life in the challenges of life because we daily partner with Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your ways acknowledge him. That means everything, you know, at home and on the finance, in your finances, on the job, in your parental skills that you're raising your kids and, and, and just the way you treat people and the way you, you decide to commit to a local church and be there. Things like this, you know, <coughs> all of that. <coughs> in all your ways, you're acknowledging him. If you'll do that, he'll direct your path. So we talked about repentance for dead works, faith in God. Number three, instructions about baptism. There's various baptisms we can talk about. Matthew 28 says about make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts chapter 2 says baptizing, baptizing the name in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Haven't anybody ever heard that? Right? And that's what we need to know. But Romans chapter 6 talks about the symbolism of water baptism. That when you, if you haven't been water baptized or you came back to the Lord and need, huh? <clears throat> yeah, I guess I am kind of sounding like I'm croaking here a little bit. <clears throat> water baptism. When you go down in the water, it's like you're saying, I'm dying with Christ and going into his tomb with him. And that preacher, finally that's you up out of that water. <laughs> You don't have to bribe him. He'll, he'll be nice and let you up. But anyway, when you finally let you up out of that water, you're saying, now I, I died, now I'm coming back to life. I can breathe again. You know, so you are taking part in the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus when you get water baptized. 
And it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing, but it's also a testimony thing. You know, water won't save you, but you should be given water baptized because that's what we're told to do. But what it really is, is you're saying to those standing by watching, I'm showing you all that I'm dead to who I used to be. I'm dead to my old path. I'm dead to the way that, that I used to walk. I'm not doing it anymore. And I'm telling all of you that I'm not ashamed that I now tell the world I belong to Jesus. Right? I tell the world that I belong to Jesus. Baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit, Holy Spirit at your new birth. I got, I got born again a few months before I got water baptized. Six months or something like that. And so I was saved. I was saved. There's no doubt I was saved. I got put in or immersed into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit when I said yes to Christ. And then other things were added. So I'm talking about water baptism, immersion into the body of Christ. And number three, it talks about the Holy Ghost baptism at Pentecost. It said they were all filled with, a, they were all together in one accord in one place, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And that from that time on, they went out with great boldness and began to really preach the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's where we're at, friends. So, Holy Ghost, human and anointed touch, the laying on of hands, one of the other main doctrines in Hebrews chapter 6, okay? Hebrews chapter 6. It, it, it's talking about the laying on of hands. You know, when you come up here and we, we pray for you and we touch you and things like that, some people don't like to be touched. Well, I understand. If you don't want to be touched, that's fine. We'll just pray for you. But, but, some, but the, the point of it is, is when Jesus put his hands on those children, and when Jesus touched the eyes of the blind man, guess what it was? It wasn't just some magic or something. It wasn't just like, uh, it feels good to want to have a human touch. Well, it, it, it feels, if you're a lonely person and you don't have a lot of love in your life, it feels good to have a human touch every once in a while, doesn't it? You know, but that's not what it's about. It was about the transference of an anointing that the Holy Spirit, as we pray for you, and you who are you to give me anything? Well, I don't know. All I can say is I step come up here and we stand and put our hands on you to pray for you to be well or whatever it is. It's not just us doing a symbolic thing. There's some of that in it, but the real thing that matters is that we're up here laying our hands on you, transferring the power and the goodness and the love of God from our hearts to you. And it talks here about a transfer of healing power, but it also goes on to talk about the transfer of anointings and gift ministry gifts. Paul told Timothy, don't forget when the, the, the elders laid their hands on you and, and anointed you, and you know, he was commissioned into his calling and ministry. I remember when I was uh, 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 fully, I mean, I've got, had different degrees of credentials and so forth, but when I got my, my, my ordination, you know, it was a very, I still remember it, and you know, me and Linda were there on our knees, <laughs> and they came up to us and put, laid their hands, anointed us on our foreheads with oil, and and just prayed over us, and it was a moving experience. It was really something, and uh, it meant a lot to me then. So it's, that's why it still means much something to me now. But if we get somebody in here, our youth pastors, different ones, that come in here and they take up a job, or take up a mantle to do a job, we want to stand around you, put our hands on you, anoint you with some oil, and transfer and blessings and anointing is especially important from from the pastor to do that, and from Apostolic type people. So anyhow, so the Holy Ghost of anointing. So we talked about these things, four things so far. We're talking about uh, repentance from dead works, faith towards God, things you should know. Instructions about baptisms, you should know that. Laying on of hands. And number five, the resurrection from the dead. The Bible says that if, if, if Jesus is not raised from the dead, we are of all men most miserable. Because we're playing a game and there's no end point to it. There's no victory to it. Because what happens is if you... Uh, if Jesus is still dead, why are we doing this? If Jesus is still dead, why are we doing this? Let's just go out and have fun. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we die, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15. But because we know he is alive, the Bible says, and there's also that song that says, you ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Amen. And so here it is, the resurrection from the dead. Jesus proved and provides victory over death. In his resurrection. Some people are, are raised, in the, and of course it talks about the resurrection of the dead. Some are going to be raised to the first resurrection. There's a second resurrection. I had more time, I'd tell you more about it. 
Some will be raised up to join Christ in heaven and, and they can be at the judgment seat of Christ and the, uh, the reward, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb and all those great things about heavenly rewards. Others a little later on are going to be raised up to, they'll be raised too, but they'll be raised to a resurrection for a judgment and, and the great white throne judgment and their last goodbye to God before they never see him again. And that's a horrible thing to have to think about. That's why I want to tell people, get saved please today, please. Saved. So, resurrection from the dead, and the last one is number six. Uh, <clears throat> well, I didn't put that up there, but I got it. Anyway, last one is final verdict, final destination. The final verdict, final destination. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a, a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. And he looks at it, and he tells the defendant, stand to your feet. He says, would the four person of the jury read the verdict? You know, when there's a doubt and they come out not guilty, you almost see sometimes people collapse. If they come out and say guilty, see people sometimes collapse under the weight of that. But eternal judgment, God gives us options. You know, there is a heaven, there is a hell. We didn't make that up. That's not just some kind of psychological cool school <laughs> tool to school scare somebody into you know, joining our church or anything. There's really hell, there's really heaven. You don't have to go to the bad place. You can choose to go with God and never even, you know, this earth might be difficult for you sometimes. You might say, this is the closest I ever got to hell. I'll never go to the real one, thank God, because Jesus is in my heart. And when I leave this earth and take my last breath, I'm going to be with Jesus, amen? But God gives us options and we choose. You know, we report, you decide. <laughs> And God gives us options, but you've got to choose. There is a reward in the beautiful heaven and the presence and blessing of God. There is a lake of fire, a lonely place of darkness. It's outer darkness, it calls it. Even though there's fire, it's, the fire doesn't light things up to help you say anything. It's a darkness, a lonely place of darkness, just as much as forever as heaven is forever. Hell was made for the devil and his fallen angels, not for you, not for humans. God doesn't want you to go there. He gives you the option. That's why he gave you an option. That's why he let his son suffer so badly on that cross and before then. And, and, and all of that because he said, I want them so bad. I want them so much to be in my heart and my family. I want them as my children so much. I'm going to, son, will you do it? He said, yes, I'll do it. So he came and did that for you and for me. So follow Jesus, find heaven, find, follow the devil and find and share in what's waiting for him. You know, it's a game of follow the leader. If I follow you wherever you go, then wherever you go, wherever you end up, is where I'm going to end up. I want to follow Jesus because I know where He's ended up already. <laughs> he's there. He built. He's built me a nice place. I'm going to go see it someday. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to tell you what are these five, these six doctrines here: repentance from dead works, faith toward God. Amen. Instructions about water, different kinds of baptisms. Number four: laying on of hands. Number five, the resurrection from the dead. And number six, the eternal judgment. It says these are foundational things that we really should master and not forget about. It says once you get those established, and it says then we can go on to perfection. That's what it says. Get these established in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in your study of Scripture. And then you get these things in place, and boy, the sky's the limit. We keep on moving on with God. And so I say this. Remember the basics. Keep the foundation. Then go on to perfection, maturity, fulfilling of God's highest purpose for your life. Seek him and he will show you what it is, what his purpose is for you, and he'll show you how to get there. Let's stand to our feet and give God some, give God our thoughts and hearts and minds to God right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Come on, everybody, just for a moment, just kind of be very prayerful. As you kind of close your eyes and just think, Lord, God, talk to me. God, I pray that as we close our eyes and just kind of close in with you, that you'll start speaking to our hearts. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Please come fill this place and flood the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. That we'll be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit's talking to you right now. And he's telling you either he's telling you that you should get saved or if you're already saved, he's telling you, you should go deeper. <laughs> Commit. Even maybe in a greater way. So as I, when nobody's looking around, I'm going to ask you right now, if, if you feel like God's 
dealing with you about something today and you feel like you're saying, get closer and 